This week we're going to take a look at 3D printing one of our models from Forger on the iPad. It's the single most requested thing that I've had since I started looking at sculpting with the iPad. And obviously we've done a lot of 3D printing over the years, so we thought why not do a bit of both. So we're going to cover off how we sculpted it with a time lapse and then show a little bit about how we decided to go ahead and print it. So follow along. So we're going to start with a time lapse this week because we're looking at 3D printing um, and we've covered a lot of the processes and lots of different ways to make this kind of, of, of model. I just thought I'd show you this one that was very, uh, it's about an hour long uh, sculpting session uh, in Forger with the express desire to get something that we could just 3D print. So what you're seeing on screen is um, it's uh, I ramp it up to 800% in Premiere, so you can you know the speed is is quite significantly faster than I work. Um, and what I'm using is f the processes that I'm teaching on the on the um, the YouTube channel. So you saw me start with a sphere. I've heavily used remesh all the way so far. So what you're seeing is a mixture of uh, the clay brush and the move tool and remesh and the first I would say 10 to 15 minutes of anything I do it, 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 certainly on the iPad is that process because I firmly believe you should block everything out put one of everything that you want so if you're having if you want ears put ears on if you want horns if you want spikes whatever your model is going to be do all of your um, early design and exploration very quickly and using remesh. So we're not looking at any detail, we're not looking at any surface features. We're just saying, right, that's pretty much the model done. And that's because you don't want to start chopping off and adding on after you've started detailing because there's always a chance you've got to redo work or you're going to have to um, go over and, and fix work that you've destroyed. So try and get that as a process, which is the same with sketching, really. So, you you know, you wouldn't go and detail a nose if you hadn't blocked out the scale of the head. Um, and it's the same with sculpting. It's how I've always taught ZBrush, which is block out and get everything in a final position in terms of the silhouette and the pose, if it's a posed piece, and get one of everything done and then move on to the, this kind of bit that you're seeing now, which is the the secondary forms. So what, what I did very quickly there was I blocked it out in, in I think it was probably only five minutes and I, then I just started going for muscle groups and main surface detail. So things like where the eye is going to go, things like the shape of the, you know, the corner of the mouth, the um, how much volume is in those cheek folds, the, the tongue um, and, it, and it came together quite quickly as you can see. It's, um, it, it doesn't take long for you to be able to, to, to get a, a good looking sculpt in, in Forger. Um, I'm, I was doing some surface detail there and now I'm doing what's, you, what's called the flatten tool. So I'm just flattening off the back. And we'll probably, when I stop the time lapse and we start looking at the model, then I'll, I'll, I'll change some of that and I'll show you how I'll prepare it for 3D print. But at the moment, I'm not thinking about 3D print at all. What, what I'm doing here on screen is just sculpting. So I'm not thinking about um, breaking it down into any pieces. I've not got separate eyes. And I'm literally just doing the, the, the artistic part, which is just make the thing in the first place. So I've made the teeth all in one. So I've just literally pulled them out of the, uh, out of the gum piece. Um, uh, what we will do is, if, if I haven't done already in this time lapse, it will all be remeshed into one piece. Um, I think you'll see there it's still two pieces. Um, but when I go for 3D print, you can leave it as two pieces. Um, but for this one, I'll probably mesh all of the uh, horns, the head and the teeth all, all as one. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see what size of, of model that is. Um, when, you're, when you're going for 3D print, there might be a point where you might need to, to, to do some, um, reduce the poly count in other programs. So with this one, I'll do it quickly in ZBrush. I'll do what's called um, either a remesh or just um, the, the one that we use all the time is Decimation Master, which brings the level of polygon count down to a significant, significantly lower level. So that's probably what we'll do with, the, with this process. 
And now I'm just doing a paint over, which um, again, is not relevant for this type of 3D printing. We do do some color 3D printing, and we have done some some, some TV shows and some pro products have needed to be full color 3D printed, but it's still very expensive. Um, and uh, uh, the results are stunning. I'll try and show some examples um, on screen. Um, but the, you know, we're not doing that here. What we're using is going to be uh, a Form 2, which is quite a, a normal, very readily available printer. Um, it's a resin printer, um, and, and I'm doing it, as I say, in one piece. So we exported from Forger, which is a very simple process, and we've covered it on quite a few videos. Uh, we did it at, we left it at the highest resolution, so it's quite a high resolution model. Uh, we ex imported it into Preform, which is from Formlabs. If you want to have a look at that, I think you can get it without having the machine. And then we basically uh, did what we're doing on screen now, which is we had a look at the, the orientation. Now, as it happens, it came in in exactly the orientation I would have wanted it to, which doesn't always happen. You can see there I just flicked it around just to show um, the other orientations and whenever you've got 3D printing and you're doing organic 3D print it's always good to lay it on its back to pull the layers through the face as you can see from the slice and if you print it any other way then you may well see uh, layering and you may get may well get print fails so what you're seeing where you see red on on the screen there that was where it needed supports so if you lay it on its back most of the supports are going to be on the back and that means that there's less cleaning up to do overall and as it as you see on the slicing now it pulls through as it prints does the supports and then builds up from the back and that means that there's no supports being generated on the, on the surface of the skin. Because the layering is now coming through the face, it doesn't show the, the striations as much uh, as if you just have it vertically. So whenever you're doing anything organic or anything that's even you know organic in terms of wood or skin, do it like this so that the, 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 the banding does come up through the face and you, you won't have many problems. And as you can see, there's minimal supports needed there. Um, and certainly with this form, the latest version of um, Preform, the contact points on the surface are quite minimal. So you don't get, to, you know, there's not a huge amount to clean up as, as long as you print it in this way. So we went ahead and we saved this, this file and, and that's the file that we would send to the printer. Right, here's what the plan was. Create a kaiju head in Forger for a YouTube video, export the model from Forger, import the model from Preform by Formlabs, slice up the model ready for 3D printing, jump in the truck and off to the studio. Then print the model using our Form 2 3D printer, have a brew while we wait for the print to finish, post the final product to YouTube and Instagram. However, things didn't go quite as planned. Our Form 2 failed us after five years of loyal service and we needed a new plan. Call up our amazing friends at McKinnon and Saunders who kindly let us use their shiny new Form 3. Jump in the truck and off to McKinnon and Saunders. Then print the model using their Form 3. Have a brew while we wait for the print to finish. And then all that's left to do is simply to take the final model and, and crack off the supports. Now the latest version of Preform software, um, as I said earlier, is, is basically they've, re they've reduced the size of the contact points on the surface. So cracking these uh, supports off is so easy, certainly compared to the earlier versions that I used to use. Uh, we printed it very small, so we did get some, uh, it was too thin on the central horn, but to be fair, I was only using this as a test print and I was very, very happy, even just for a few inches um, size of print the surface detail from Forger was absolutely fine. So we're in a later video, what we'll do is we'll probably prepare a much bigger one and we might slice off the back to make it flatter so it sits nicely on the wall. But overall, a huge success. So really, really impressed with what I got out of Forger without having to go to ZBrush. If you're enjoying all of our videos, um, and obviously you can see things from Forger, from a new one called Nomad, we've got Gravity Sketch in VR, Oculus Medium, and ZBrush, then please subscribe to the channel. 
give us a like on the video that you do like and let us know what it is you want to see more of so that we can help to tailor our content to, to, to what you require. Um, one thing that I would mention is there's a YouTuber called Uncle Jesse who's been a massive support to me this week in terms of the problem we had in this video. So I'm now going to buy a new printer based off his videos and you can see here the videos um, that helped me decide which of the large format resin printers to uh, choose so by all means I would suggest giving him a quick follow and just take a look at those videos